Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be basically all of the questions that I can think to tell you if you are PCSing to Misawa, Japan. Misawa is a very small city. So if you come here, you have to have an open mind. This is not gonna be one of those cities where everyone loves it here and everyone hates it here. So before I even answer any of these questions, if you come here with the preconception that this base is going to be a shitty base and you're gonna hate your life here, that's exactly what's gonna to happen to you. So come here with an open mind it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be, I pinky promise. I came from a bigger base and I quite honestly love Misawa a lot better. It is what you make it. I'm going to try to answer all the questions that I knew I at least had when I came here and I also talked to my boyfriend and he gave me a few ideas too. So I hope that this video helps answer a lot of questions but I don't know if it will answer them all so please feel free so go ahead and leave questions down at the bottom and I will try my hardest to go ahead and answer them as best as I can. If you are single and you have been in three years or more and you are at least an E4 or above, you can live off base. If you are accompanied and have dependents, you will have to live on base. If you are a single airman and you are e form below and have not been in three years, you will most likely have to live in the dorms. It's really not that bad. I've seen the dorms. You get your own room. You get your own bathroom. It's a pretty decent sized room. Living on base, basically what it is is you're gonna live, if you've lived on base before, you probably already know this, but to answer questions for maybe someone who is newly wed coming here or whatever, what you're gonna get is you're, you're not gonna get your OHA, you're still gonna get your COLA, you're still gonna get your BAS and all of that. And you are gonna have your own house and you don't have to pay any bills for that house because they basically take your OHA as payment of the house, which can in turn actually save more money than you would think because if you live off base, you get only the allotted amount. I believe when I, I got here a year ago and I believe at the time it was 160,000 yen is the max that you can go. It works out for me because I was able to get a large house but also I still have to pay utilities. So if my utilities go over, I pay out of pocket for those utilities. Whereas you don't actually have to deal with that off, like if you live on base. I will say living here in the summer, the summer months, the utilities actually go up. Winter months, my bills go down by like almost $100, if not more. You can actually save money going and staying on base which I think everyone kind of knows that. If you do live off base, you can choose a very, very big house, which is what I have. But you also have to take into account that your utilities are gonna be a little bit higher. So yes, you can get your bigger house. It's a lot nicer. I love my house. But at the same time, I do have a little more utilities because my house is bigger. There's ways you can get around it, but do keep in mind that if you get a bigger house, you will have to pay more utilities because you are heating up a bigger house. The way we pay our bills off base. There is a place called GI Bill Pay right outside the gate. So basically what you're gonna do is, well, you don't have to, but this is what I did because it's a lot easier. You basically pay them $10 a month. And what they do is you give them your account information and they pay your bills for you. So basically you pay them $10 a month and they pay everything you need to pay and that's it. So. If you don't use that service, yeah, you save $10, but you also now have to figure out exactly where all your bills are. You need to translate all of your bills from Japanese. I get bills all the time in my door and it's all in Japanese, nothing is in English. I really hardly get any. I think I can count on maybe one hand how many times in the entire year that I've been here, how many times I've gotten something in English. Totally up to you, but I would highly recommend GI Bill Pay. Super professional, super good. They have an Ikea, which is really cool, except for it's four hours away. When I tried to order something online from Ikea, it would not ship to my on-base address, and it also would not, sh it, and when I tried to ship it to my actual physical address here, it told me I had to pick it up at the store. There is a furniture store on base, so 
it's a little more costly to be completely honest but you can also order from amazon my desk that my computer is sitting on right now is actually from amazon you are limited to what you can send to the post office here on base because there is it's very small they have sports authority here they do have a sports authority um you do get your uh, military discount from there it's actually in, uh, about 15 minutes away at the shimoda mall it depends on where you live you might be actually be closer to it the mall is actually really nice ish not really American mall so if you're used to like huge like five-story malls you're gonna think this one sucks if you're used to like smaller malls it's really not that bad there's not really a whole lot that we ever go there for except to go eat that there's um, a food court there a lot of stuff though you can get on Amazon and Amazon ships here really fast so don't get discouraged that there's nothing here the BX also is really small I'll go ahead and warn you guys that that too um, they have everything that you need but they don't have a large selection if there's anything that you want to buy from the BX website they will ship it here and you can get it that way so don't get super discouraged McDonald's they have a McDonald's here on base they have um, American food it's a commissary so you can cook your own American food and I think that's really basically it they don't really have a whole lot of American stores pets are allowed here However, if you have your orders, or if you already know you're coming here, start on your quarantine now. Unless you live on base, you are gonna have to put them in the kennel. And the kennel is not really, it's not, it's not as expensive as stateside, but it is not cheap either. I had really short orders. I had to be there within four months, and the quarantine period is six months. So try really hard to get your quarantine started because I did not know that. And when I got here, she had to be in quarantine for four months. And luckily I knew somebody on base, so they were able to watch her for me versus me having to put her in the kennel. The vet at my last base told me that that was not allowed and not to do that because that's how people get in trouble and lose their privileges and she'd have to like get sent back or all kinds of crazy stuff. And then I talked to the vet here and they're like, no, as long as you fill out a form saying that it's okay then they can they can watch her for you if your base tells you something I would highly suggest you talk to Masawa base vet clinic and stuff like that um, because they will give you more information and they will help you out a little bit more not saying that the other place won't but they know more of what their procedures are than the other base does you do have to pay for your pets to come here um, if they do go in quarantine in the kennel they will pay you up to $400 reimbursement but if they're in there longer, like for instance, she would have been had to be in there for four months, that $400 would have done nothing for me. It is $20 a night for dogs and I think $15 a night for cats. Lots of ramen here. <laughs> there is a lot of ramen. There is sushi here. There is a place called Hamazushi. It's basically a conveyor belt of sushi. So if you like sushi, that's good. It is a little more bland, not in a bad way. It's very different from what you think of American sushi. That was like one thing that threw me completely off because I was like, I love sushi and I got here and it's not the same kind of sushi. So it's still good. There is a place called Coco's. It's basically curry. Everyone and their mother is absolutely obsessed with that place. But to be completely honest, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this if anyone here sees this, I think Coco's is overrated, but a lot of people love it. So that is a place, if you like curry, that might be somewhere you wanna try. There is a place called Vikings. I think it's still called that. It's under new management now. So I don't know if that's actually what it's called anymore, but it's basically where you cook your own food at the table. So you go there, you go pick your meat, like what you wanna eat, put it on the thing, cook it, and then eat it right there. It's really cool, it's really good nobody's gonna mess up your order because you cook it yourself so it's really good it's also not that expensive either uh, back to the mall the food court there's quite a few places in there that are really good but my absolute favorite and my boyfriend's as well is pepper lunch basically it's kind of like a skillet meal so what you're gonna do is you're gonna order your food and they're gonna put it on a hot skillet and the skillet's gonna cook it while you sit there and wait <laughs> so it's really cool it's really good. It's really good. 
Um, the only thing is, is if you like your stuff well done, you're going to want to try and get the thinner meats because sometimes the meat will not cook all the way through because the skillet is not completely hot. Well, it's hot. It's very hot, but it's not, it cools down before it can cook. You can always go back up there and ask them to reheat the skillet and they will, but sometimes it's so packed there that it's not even worth going up there because you, it takes you 20 minutes just to find your seat. Masala is cool and it has a lot of neat things here, but it is small. So there's going to be only so much you can do here. With that also being said, this is still Japan. You are in a whole nother country. Feel free to go out and travel. You can go to Tokyo. Tokyo is a few hours from us. Um, <clears throat> Sapporo is, there's like ice festivals and like ice sculpture festivals that they do in the winter. There's winter, winter festivals here, like not here here, but like a few minutes away, like I think like 30 minutes away. There's like festivals, there's all kinds of stuff to do. They have festivals outside of the gate that you can just go walk. There's like all kinds, they have a lot of stuff to do. Just don't sit in your house and don't and not do it because then you're gonna hate it here. They also have a whole bunch of outdoor activities. So there's snowboarding, skiing, they have a lake here, they have the beaches here. They also have um, drag racing somewhere. I don't know exactly where it's at, but I know that they have drag racing here. There is that. There's also, if you are a single airman, they have the sax trips, which single airman extreme or something like that. And then they have the ITT trips as well. So basically, that I have seen they have cruises. I have seen where they take you to Tokyo for a week. They take you to Mount Fuji. They, and it's a lot cheaper than if you paid out of pocket. So if you come here and you don't have a lot of friends, try those trips. You don't want to go travel by yourself. Like you don't have to because they have trips that you can go take. It snows a lot. <laughs> I'm sure there's probably like five people or 500 people that have already told you that, but it definitely snows a lot. It's not that bad. The only issue is, and I will really warn you, is to be careful when you're buying your car because a lot of people tell you to get your car and make sure it's good in snow, which I highly agree with. However, a lot of the off base issue is still ice. They do salt the roads on base, but they do not salt the roads off base. So still be very, very careful. They do have a winter briefing. Um, I think it's already over. So if you're coming here in the winter, but it's it's after now. <laughs> they don't have a winter briefing, but they do have one that they it's mandatory if you didn't go to the first one, you have to go to the next one because they do give you really good tips on how to make sure your tires are good, how to make sure to drive in the snow. Obviously be careful um, to make sure that when you go out and do trips and stuff that you you stay safe. Other weather, it does get warm here in the summer. It does, you can wear shorts and stuff, but it does say, it does stay winter here for a while. So it usually starts snowing, I think in November-ish, and it probably stops around April. Sometimes it might still snow in May, but it does stop around April, I believe. Um, it might, it, this year it actually has not been that bad. It hasn't, it snowed a little bit, but not nowhere near what it did last year. So I don't know if that means it's going to snow worse later on or what, or if it's just not going to be that bad of a winter. If you have any kinds of winter clothes, I would highly recommend that you bring it. And if you have summer clothes, don't be discouraged because you can still use them. For your cars, there is the lemon lot on base, which is where I bought mine. It just means that someone here had their car and they're selling it to you. Usually you can find them cheaper there. A lot of times you still get the same thing that you would uh, at the car lot, except the car lot can give you a little bit more than what maybe a person who's just trying to sell their car. You can buy your car at the lemon lot or you can go to one of the car lots off base. It's mandatory in Japan that you have snow tires. <laughs> So if you don't have snow tires after November 15th, you can be fined. And if you get in a car accident, it will automatically be your fault because you don't have those tires on. So they are very important that you have snow tires. So when you get a car here, make sure you have snow tires. The cars here are a lot smaller. If you are used to America, cars here are like half that size. You do have something called the JCI, which is basically a Japanese um, inspection. 
mandatory every two years so i would highly suggest you finding a car that doesn't have one due because it's going to cost about 500 bucks insurance though there is insurance places there is a insurance place right off base which is where i go they also give you the option to pay a year in advance which is what i did it was about like three or four hundred dollars for the whole year not everyone here speaks english <clears throat> which is understandable because it's not their language so <laughs> You do have to be mindful that sometimes if you do go somewhere, you might be somewhere that doesn't speak English. However, it's not hard to point. I'm telling you, the Japanese people here are so nice that they will help you do whatever you need to do. If you want to order something, if you just point at what you want, they will write it down and they will bring it to you. If you're going somewhere where you need a little more help and you actually need them to answer questions, um, Google Translate is a, is a lifesaver. Google Translate, you can put in what you want in English and it will translate it to Japanese. They can also answer it back on your phone. You just have to download the Japanese um, keyboard. You are more than welcome to take Japanese classes. They have all kinds of Japanese like learning books and stuff like that. They have, I think, Rosetta Stone in the BX that you can buy for Japanese. There's ways to learn Japanese. It's not impossible. You just actually have to be able to take the time out and actually learn it. If you have a stateside phone, as long as it's unlocked, you should be able to use it here. So you definitely have the option of getting your phone here. You can unlock it here, but it's not like the states. You actually have to pay to get it unlocked. It's like $40. So if you do buy a brand new phone here, you can take it with you, unlock it, and take it with you, and use it at your next base or whatever. There is also two different phone companies inside of the BX. So they have the SoftBank or AU. And I've heard AU is better than SoftBank, but I personally have SoftBank, so I can't speak on AU, but I don't think SoftBank is that bad. However, I will tell you that for SoftBank, I did not know, nobody told me until my boyfriend told me actually, that you have to manually reset your data, and if you don't, they will, over, they will charge you a fee for over your data usage. Doesn't make sense to me, it should just reset itself, but I don't know why nobody told me that, or if they did, I didn't understand what they were telling me. Add all the Facebook pages. There is a Misawa Asks, there's a Misawa Asks, Asks No Rules, there's a Misawa Yard Sale, Misawa Yard Sale 2.0, Misawa Furniture Sale. There's so many Misawa Facebook pages. Just add them. There's also an out the gate one that tells you everything that's going on, like all the events that you can go to. That's a really good one. Add the Facebook pages. That's going to be the best thing that I can tell you to do because if you have any questions, you can go on Masala Asks and there will be at least one person who will actually legitimately help you and answer you. And if you go to the art sale pages, you can find furniture and things like that that you're going to need without having to go all over and ordering from all over the place to get it. The, the Facebook pages do help a lot. That's another thing I probably should have added. The restaurants are kind of hidden. That's why you should also add the uh, Facebook page Masawa Eats because people will, they will tell on those little hidden restaurants and you can go eat there. That is the end of the video. If you watched it till the very end, I appreciate it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. As always, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.